And I've been daydreaming about this night Honey, then we're gonna have a good time A thousand hands up to the sky We gonna get toasted tonight Can't let it fade We got a sparkle in our eyes Can't let it wait I'm counting down until we start We're renegades We come to play Yeah, we play hard mm. Honey, then we're gonna have a good time A thousand hands up to the sky We gonna get toasted tonight I've been feeling it all day I wanna let it go I wanna lose control Oh, I'm ready to roll And I've been daydreaming about this night Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the morning toast. It's a brand hey, new day, hey, and we have hey, a song. We're so musical. I mean, it's a musical morning show that now appropriately has a song. If you haven't streamed toast yet, I'm sorry for your loss. I can't even believe. First, of, is someone moving furniture? Yeah. <laughs> I can't even believe. There's so many things I can't believe. One. I can't believe how big my thigh looks. Wow, I literally just looked at the No, you bone. look great. You look tanner than me for someone who's been on vacation. Well, I did the San Tropez mousse, and that is the strap for my shoe. Oh. Yeah. The mousse is good. But it cuts out on the stream. Oh, like okay. Your shoe is so I won't, I won't point out my flaws. No. Um, last night was, like, actually the best night of my life. And, you know, when I was in the car on the way there, I was, like, very nervous. Like, more nervous than I get, like, for a show. I don't know why. I just, like... I didn't, I didn't want the song to like flop or like the party to be weird. I always have a pit when throwing a party. No, there's actually nothing more treacherous than throwing a party. And we somehow find ourselves like always throwing I random know. parties. We're always just like celebrating like small milestones. Well, yeah, but we have like major milestones yeah. that we don't celebrate. No. But then we celebrate these small things. But it was really, it's funny how you like categorize a party. Like when we had our toast anniversary, it was a soiree. This was a party. It was a p -p 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 party. Margo, what comes before part B? Party. Yeah. Part A. 
Part A. Why did you say it like that? <laughs> I like she just assumed that was the answer. Because you just said it. <laughs> <laughs> Counselor Snitch, the band's back but, together. But do you know, I know what that's from? What, uh, what comes before Part B? Like, just, I don't know, Popsicle Stick? It's from the first ever episode of The Hills. I hey, thought you were going to say Friends, and I was no, like... No, Heidi's like, what comes before Part B? And Lauren's like, Part A. Ew. The gang is back together. Jackie French Camper is gone. French Camper fell off a cliff, and American Camper's back. Rose from the Dead. We're very excited to have you back. We're I'm very so excited. excited to be back. I had a wonderful vacation, like much needed, but it really made me miss and love my job. And I also happened to be reading Howard Stern's book while I was on vacation. It was so long, it took me like the whole time. And it just made me really jazzed about what we're doing here. Oh, interesting. And it just gave me like new, breathed new life into An me. An invigorated sense of self. So I just really wanted to get back to work. And I needed to come to your launch party. So I came back a few days early to do it all. And like there, last night, what was the place called? The drugstore. The drugstore was the place to be. Yeah. And by the way, it really was. Because I am like was so loose with the invitations list. Like, I literally invited everyone I know. And I told them, I'm like, bring five people. And everyone followed the rules. Like, everyone brought three people. There were so many people there that I didn't know. No, I didn't know anyone. But, like, I was just looking around. I'm like, this is my fucking party, you know? Yeah, so if you don't know them, like, that's not right. But Whatever. I didn't really care. Everyone added to the vibes that were but steamy. It's, it's just like, you know, I was tapping into, you know, the most elite group of toasters like people so I invited Emily Dinanato she came and she like stuck around the whole time she was so cool and she had like two pretty friends she brought with her was it hard for you to have another model in the room I mean <laughs> it, it's nice to talk to someone who like understands the industry guys the craziest thing happened like when my, my Instagram bio has actually since changed but for a while my Instagram bio just said model and when Olivia Jade and Bella like came back on Instagram to wish their mom a happy birthday like it was apparently news and what outlet was it Inquisitor yeah, it was some, like, podunk outlet. Some outlet yeah. wrote it up, and they, like, noted that I left a comment on it, and they wrote, they referred to me as Model Claudia Ashray. Like, they did no work. Model, pop star, comedian. She does it all. She does it all. Mother. Mother. Oh, my blogger. God. Of course. The most... Blogger. The most, <laughs> blogger. The most important role. Yeah. A woman can play. Is herself. Is mom. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, everyone just showed up. Emily Titanato, Margaret Josephs came, who I absolutely adore, but she also brought her husband. And I just, like, I wonder if he had fun. He seemed like he was having a blast. I realized I hadn't met him before, but I feel like I know him. No, I know. I like he just jumps him. off the screen, you know? No, totally. Your husband's in the pool. <laughs> I really love them. She was the best. And then, like, just out of nowhere, I invited her, but I didn't think she would come. Dr. Sharon Gizzi. Icon. Also the life of the party. Totally. And the, her date was her nurse who did my, my surgery. Yeah. And he, like, knows I was so crazy, like, screaming at the top of my lungs. I don't think I had met him before, but, like, he's responsible for, like, the disappearance of Mr. Cosmopolitan. Right. No, he <laughs> is truly, like, a leading doctor in his field. Yeah. A trailblazer. Trailblazer. A pioneer. Um, you, it was literally, you weren't even being Megan Fox in Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen when Stu Wolf shows up to her party, but, like, you could have been. That's what I was going to say. Like, Stu Wolf's at my party. When you're, like, walking through, like, Shep Rose. Yeah. And then the entire, well, not the entire, Naomi um, left for St. Bart super early, but... Like, most of the cast came. Okay, and I just have, I have, like, a lot of thoughts on everyone, you know? I have a lot of thoughts on everyone, because I, yesterday when I got home, I caught up on the two new episodes of Southern Charm that I missed, so I was, like, in it, and then they all showed up to the party, and I was like, Madison, you go, girl. I, like, honestly, like, Madison is so pretty. She's a precious gem of When a I asked her and Austin if they were together, like, we're not not together, so I think that's a yes. I think they're together based on, like, everything that they were doing. I think they should be. Her dress was so cute. She is so cute. Catherine looked amazing. Oh my God. She wore the Taylor Swift retro feet dress, but she also parted her hair down the middle, which she hasn't done in a really long time. And it looked really good. It looked really good. Thank God you didn't wear that dress. <gasps> oh my God. Yes, I was going to. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Ben was trying to convince me to wear the dress. I and mean, I'm like, I, I just love can't that, wear dress. that dress. That's like your Tiffany Haddish dress. Yes. <laughs> where you just wear it to everything. That is my Tiffany Haddish dress. <laughs> because you spent money on it and it looks good on you. I spent money on it twice. Because it's the dress. It's, it's a magical dress, too. It's like sort of, the, like, it fits everyone. Yeah, no. I've never seen someone wear that dress and look bad. And, and any time I've seen someone wear that dress, like, I just saw Lynn and Stella wore it. I saw Kyle Richards wore it on Watch Travis Life. Anytime I see someone wearing it, to me, it's the best they've ever looked. Or, like, they've looked in a long time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know why, but I feel like I wouldn't look good in it. Me, too. I think Really? Because I feel like the way that it cuts you, like, I feel like I would just look like a big-breasted woman. You should try it on. And short. I should try it. Just, they sell it. Oh. Try it on. Yeah. They sell it at, um, Sacks, you could just go and try it on. Okay, we'll see. I can't say the words just try on without pretending pretending to be Penelope Cruz in Spanglish. Right, and that's an inside joke I have with my friends, so I was like... By the way, it's an inside joke I have with my friends, Wait, that's too. so weird. So I just started to say it, I'm like, oh no, that's a midgets thing. No, no, it's it's totally... Just um, try it on. 
Just that's and when she's like sewing the labels for the daughter, it's so cute. That is so funny. It's actually Spanglish is a really underrated movie. Yeah. Um. Okay, who else was at the party? I mean, Jack, are, Jackie O was there. Jackie O was there. She didn't stay too long because she hopped off the plane at JFK. Joey she Camasta. Stayed so long. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. She stayed so long. Joey Camasta was there. He's so fun, and he was he stayed out with us till the break of dawn. Yeah, he's course. so funny. Like, of course, I can't just have a party. Like, I had to go till the break of dawn. Of course, it was a big night. It was, and then when we went to a club afterwards, and Margot, you've Lewin, been daydreaming about this night for, for a, a long, long time. time. She was trying to get him to play the song. <laughs> and the guy was, like, super old, like, just not even aware of, like, anything. And she literally was fighting with him. He wouldn't play it. I, like, went up to him, and I just played it on my phone, and I was just, like, here. And he's, like... Also, it was he, closing time. Like, there was nobody there. He really could have played it. But, like, he'll learn, you know, when it's, like, when he's looking, cruising the pop charts for his next song, and then he starts playing Toast by Claudia Asher. We're literally top ten overall, and we're number four on the pop chart. I am above You Need to Calm Down, Taylor Swift, and I just can't. I mean, it is a better song. I actually would agree. What do you think in your shirt? Look <laughs> at her, supporting the rival. Oh, my God, Margaret, you don't even support me? She's supporting your your competition. For um, those asking, the song is on iTunes and Spotify. I believe it's on Amazon Music, YouTube Music, like all the places. Any like normal place you can stream music, including Tidal, which is exciting. Yes, and I went on my fire stick today, and I said, Alexa, play Toast by Claudia Ashray. And she said, sure, can't bitch. find. No. <laughs> she did. She said, can't find Toast by Claudia Australia. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great pop star name. Yeah, Claudia Australia. I also have so many leftover pop sockets. Um... Maybe I'll just like do a giveaway because I don't know I don't need that many pop sockets with my face on it. No, and like the pop sockets that we sell are so quality, you really don't need to get a new one. Like we should sell like as business people, we should sell shittier pop sockets so For people business. have to keep, keep replenishing. But we wouldn't do that to you. No, guys. we sell brand name. Yeah. Um, only the best. Only the best. I'm just like truly on a high. Like when we went to bed and the song had like made it into the eight, like 80th spot on the chart, I was like, yes, yeah, so this is really what I set out to do. I just want to like break the chart, get in, and then like move on with my life. And then I woke up this morning and someone sent me that at one point in time it was number seven overall. And I was like, I was shook. And I, a lot of that just has to do with the fact that I think people are really shocked. Like the song's like good. No, I think all, everything today is like just your fans supporting you, ride or die, no matter what it sounds like. But it's such a good song that it's just going to continue. Like, they're going to tell their friends who aren't toasters, and all of a sudden, it's a toast to the wild ones, a toast and to the good And it's just life. like a good song. You don't have to be a toaster to appreciate it, but the toasters do appreciate it. A hundred percent. Like, you could have released a pile of dog shit, and you would have gotten on the charts. Right. But it's not that. Yeah, Ariana Grande is, like, really making it difficult for me to secure that number one spot, but it's okay. It's, if any, like, if it's going to be anyone, it's either her or Taylor. Yeah. And that's okay. And Lil Nas. Like, and Lizzo is going to make it tough for you. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think I could ever really get higher than four because of those people. Old Town Road, Ariana Grande, Lizzo, then me. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's a great place to be, right? It is. I mean, such great company. I'm feeling so comfortable where I am. Like, I'm just, I'm really excited. Like, you know, what? like, when you get really excited about something and then it happens and it's just like, it was like, it's like a weird feeling. Yeah. I'm like cruising. It's anticlimactic. Yeah, I am cruising this high like all the way through the weekend. No, same. I mean, it's a perfect song. I guess that's why the It's On Me music is on Friday because it's the perfect song for the weekend. Pre-game. Like I've been daydreaming about this night for a long time. And honestly, I all dance. I want to do is dance with you under moonlight. Under moonlight. What could be better? So I posted the, um, the chart on my Instagram and people are accusing me of photoshopping it. That's crazy. I because know. they could just go look for themselves. Like, how lazy are you no, to totally. make an accusation before you check but the But you know factuals. what? That, is, that does sound like something I would do. Yeah, but you wouldn't Photoshop yourself at number four. You yeah, know, I would make myself number one. Yeah. Duh. Duh. Yeah, even if you don't hit number one, you should do that. All the sudden, Charm Kids, like, really looked good. They did. They oh, another update for my party. Did you see that Taylor Strecker and Stephen Miggy made up? Oh, no. Yep, they have been in a fight for, like, almost a year. I mean, it's hard when you're jamming along to a song that says a toast to you and I to not look at the partner next to you. And just want to toast to them. Right. And you. Like, your words are just bringing people together. By the way, it's so true. That's, that's really the power of music. Mm -hmm. And the power of the toast, which well, is why yes. it's so apt. It's just, it's a great day. It's going to be a great weekend. I literally, all I do is listen to my own song. And I played it in the car yesterday. And Margo, I dropped you off in an Uber. And the Uber driver was like, are you a singer? And I'm like, <laughs> yes, I am. You are. I am. You were a singer before this. Of course, but now it's cemented Now you're a chart-topping singer. Yes, so Spotify, iTunes, it's called Toast. Thank you guys really, truly so much for the support thus far. This is way more than I expected, and I'm very grateful, and I'm just, I'm excited to be alive. I need to go to a party so I can play my song. Yeah. But I don't want to leave my house. It's so hard. So hard. Okay, well, do you think that it's time? Oh, yeah, it's definitely time. It feels like time, and, you know, we'll just go in and out.
Of course. Of the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. But before we do that, I would be absolutely remiss, heartbroken, and devastated. You would be remiss as hell, honestly. Remiss AF. <laughs> if I didn't let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Daily Harvest. They deliver thoughtfully sourced, chef-crafted food that is built on fruits and vegetables and can be prepared in less than five minutes. Fill your box with more than 65 different options like ready-to-blend smoothies, refreshing chilled soups, and savory harvest bowls. All of Daily Harvest's ingredients are sourced and selected for maximum nourishment. The best part? Daily Harvest single-serving cups are the ultimate grab-and-go meal or snack, so you can get a dose of nourishing fruits and vegetables at any time of day. Um, I find these particularly helpful mostly for breakfast because who has time for breakfast these days? Especially when you're a morning show host. When you're more, uh, like a working woman. But it's like what you put into your body, especially in the morning, like makes a difference on how you feel. Like I've yeah. been eating like garbage, so I feel like garbage. But, like when I'm on my grind, just like waking up every morning with like my bowls. You and know, your smoothies. Like that really makes me feel good. No, as it should. And it's now I like perfect- have milk in my fridge. I never have milk in my fridge, but because Daily Harvest, when you put, you could put, you could put ice or you could put whatever you want, but I put milk. Um, I'm like, I have groceries, you know? Got milk. Got milk. Yes, bitch. So go to dailyharvest.com and enter promo code toast to get $25 off your first box. That's promo code toast for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. Dailyharvest.com code toast. That's dailyharvest.com? Code Daily-harvest.com? Oh, is it? No, it's dailyharvest.com. Okay, sweet. Because they changed our website. Ooh, exciting. Anyways, Love Daily Harvest gives me the energy I need to give you the first story. Okay. Which is just a premium bit of news. You know, it's not necessarily biz news. Where's it from? It's from page six. Ooh, so it must be about someone super glamorous. Super glamorous, (laughs) super famous, beautiful, and thin. Yes, I agree. Instagram star Claudia (laughs) Ashray celebrates first song toast with the cast of Southern Charm. Oh my God, I can't believe my party's in page six. Like, that, that is actually the telltale sign of a good party. Yeah, it is. And I know we probably would say this no matter how the Are party. Are you okay? I'm, just, <laughs> I'm tearing up because it was such a beautiful night. It really was, but do you need to cough? No, no, no. Okay. I got this. Okay. Uh, we would say this no matter how the party shaked out because we love our friends and Agreed. family. And, like, we and we know think, how to have a good time. we just think we're the greatest. Yeah, but it <laughs> really we do. really do. <laughs> but it really was the place to be in New York last night, you mm-hmm. know? Like, it was the happening spot. We had housewives, reality stars, models, singers, pop stars, comedians. Counselors. Guests including... Counselors. Campers. Yeah. Campers. Guests including Real Housewives of New Jersey star Margaret Josephs sipped on signature cocktails including a spicy Clotarita, while a countdown to the single's release at midnight played on a projector. Quote, Southern Charm stars Shep Rose, Craig Conover, Catherine Dennis, and Austin Kroll also attended after filming the Bravo show's season six reunion. Kroll's on-again, off-again Madison LaCroix, who made headlines when she accused Rose of giving castmate Danny Bard an STD, which Rose denied, was also at the party. Danny Bard was there. Um, and I've never met her, and I just don't know why, like, people... I, I just, like, have this thing where I assume people, like, know who I am, like, especially, like, when you're at my party. Yeah. So I saw Catherine, and I no, gave her a hug. You need to check yourself. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I saw Catherine, and I gave her a I'm hug. Like, I'm kidding, because it is your party. No, but, like, I do need to check myself in general. <laughs> like, I I saw Catherine. Catherine, I gave her a hug, and she was there with Danny, and, like, I just gave Danny, like, a huge hug. I'm like, let's take a picture. Like, I was being so annoying, but, like, and she, uh, 100%, like, had no idea who I was. And that's fair for Danny. She's never met us. Before, she wasn't... No, we've never met her. Okay, so she's never done a reunion then. Because every time they have a reunion, we go out with them. Oh, that's true. This is like our annual thing. Naomi said it's three years in a row. It is. Good for us. That's so funny. It's like every time I see it on my time hop, I'm like, oh, Oh, that was fun. I will never happen again. Yeah, (laughs) totally. But this time was bigger and better than ever. By the way, Madison LaCroix said something so cute. Well, not cute, actually. I was talking to her in Austin, and she was being like super weird and shy, and Austin was like, Madison thinks you don't like her. And I'm like, what? And honestly, like, I don't, you're, like, really, like, a Southern Charm stan. Like, I just, like, dabble in and out. Um, Did I say anything? I said she's nice. I don't, I don't recall. I feel like we've only said nice. She hasn't really been in the thick of it until this week. But I came up with a good answer. Ready? I'm like, no, you know what it is? It's like, (laughs) I actually, like, was being, like, such a shit starter. I was like, you know, I'm just, like, really good friends with Shep. And, like, I just, like, tell, I do what he tells me. And, like, he just doesn't like you. So I just, like, listen to him. But that's how I was thinking about it last night because, I don't know, it was just, I was talking to the cast of Southern Charm and like I, lo- I really love them all. So when me they too. fight, and they're it, such it, good peeps. It hurts me, and I really have so far been Team Madison. Even when Chep was here and he was explaining why they aren't a fit, I feel like we're not being told the whole story because based on everything they're saying, there's no reason why everyone should be so anti Madison and Austin. Yeah, you know. So that's I just feel like I don't know everything, and therefore until I have all the information, I really like Madison, and I like no, how she was so cute. Like I love her. She was so cute. She's like. 30 times cuter in person. Like, the cuteness doesn't emulate on TV. She's, like, short. She's so petite, yeah. yeah. 
And I liked her relationship with Catherine. Now we know she is a single mom, which makes more sense as to why her and Austin might not be a fit because he has to stop partying. Like, if yeah. he's going to come home to her son. Mm -hmm. And she just, like, can't be flexible about that. Agreed. So I'm really enjoying her on the show. And even though what she said was, like, definitely crossed the line below the belt about the STD, yeah. she went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Shep. And I love Shep, but, like, you have to be able to, you know... Play the game. Play the game. Dish it out as much Did as you can Did they say take which STD specifically? Uh, chlamydia. chlamydia. You will get chlamydia and, and die. die. So that was really crazy. And she could have said if she really wanted to, like, dig at him, like, I heard you gave a girl chlamydia. Like, she didn't have to bring Danny into it. Right. But, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. No. So anyways, this sounded like a great party. And, like, for everyone that was there, and especially this girl in her big arms taking a photo <laughs> of the girl. Um, that's me, by the way. She looks like yeah, she's I hope you would never time. talk about someone else like that. <laughs> this, look how big my arms look. Um, I do have to tell you, like, I did facetune myself, thus making you, like, a little larger. You, oh, really? Yeah. Okay, that I don't but mind. I, just, I didn't think people would really see you. Like, you were in a sea of people, but I, I now realize that was selfish, and I'm sorry. Oh, I don't care. I'm just glad I don't actually look like that. No, no, no. You actually looked, like, super cute and petite, but, like, I, I needed to take some inches off my waist. Oh, that's totally fine, because it's really not about me in this picture. I'm, I'm glad you agree. Yeah, even though everyone else is kind of faceless, and I'm just like, yeah, no, I mean, very you're, you're really there. Yeah. Very, you know, I'm really impressed with Page Six's ability to really like know what cool parties were going on last night. You yeah, know? and to really just like get the hard hitting news, and it really was interesting. I guess Madison and Austin are together. The yes. Southern Charm reunion, we were getting spoilers, and I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but it's I, it's always lit, but it sounded like a good one. Yeah, and they all like looked so exhausted, like it was like a it was a treacherous day for them. Yeah, it was a treacherous day for a lot of us, but. We wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Me neither. We've I had been a pit all day about this night for, for a long, a long time. time. And honestly, I feel a party coming on. Should we go back out? <laughs> no. Oh my god, I need to get back in bed. Like I have literally the worst headache ever, and my body is fatigued AF. I understand. But you know what? That's the life of a pop star, man. Yeah, get used to it. I need to come up with some choreo, you know? Oh, I was thinking that. Like, moves that we could all do. You know, make yeah. it the next toe down, throw down. Or like the next bad romance, you know? Oh, totally. You know what? I'll take the lead on that. I yeah, feel like that's that. my um, that's Forte. my job. Yeah, cool. Next story, a little more. Do you remember like a time in your life when like you loved dancing, like you wanted to be a rocket? I didn't want to be a rocket. I've always loved dancing, but I when you're a kid, like it's normal to like take dance class. Yeah, and but like you took it really seriously. I took it really seriously. Well, we used to we took all the same classes, but I remember when I went to camp yeah. Vega. We took dance class, and then they made like an elite squad of dancers, and I made the team. Known as the special dancing unit. <laughs> <laughs> Known as the special dancing unit. And I made the team, which was like really crazy because I had like no proper it was training. An honor. It's like being on the gymnastics team when like you've never Gen had a coach. Right. Like it was never really been on an a balance honor. Beam. And the coach of the special dancing unit was a former rocket. Was a former rocket. So I was just like inspired by her. Inspired. So many people always ask. Oh my god, when I was in. France, like, and we were going to all these clubs. Like, I could not stop dancing. Good. This Frenchman, like, he was sitting with his son and his wife, and I, I saw them watching me dance. And he came up to me after, and he was like, in his French accent, he's like, "It is a joy to watch you dance." That is, I was like, that, a I, joy. I think that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. In I my think life. so too. I thought you were going to say it is a dream. Oh, it would. It was a dream for me to, to be, be a, a joy, joy for, for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my, that is such a nice compliment. Yes. No one's so, literally ever said that to me. Or even remotely. <laughs> like, they're going to be like, you get that, and they would be like, can you just stop dancing, please? <laughs> can you get out of the way? I can't see that girl behind you. No, but they're, they would say, can you get on stage and sing? Yeah, they would. Well, now they would. Now According they would. page six. I eight. feel like your song could be big in, like, Ibiza. It's definitely, like, a club. Um, you should send it to Paris. I did. Did she give you any feedback? Um, um, I just said to her, so I'm, I, I don't know if she's listened to it yet, but I did, and I'm really toying with the idea of having her remix it. If she would do it, I would be very grateful. Honestly, it would be a dream for the DJ who does remix it because, like we said, it really is a bop. It's bop season over here. Okay, next story. Stassi Schroeder, Bo Clark, celebrate engagement with the Vanderpump Rules cast. Stassi and Bo are engaged. They got engaged in a cemetery. Kurtzman <laughs> AF. Um, the, like, when I saw it on my on my screen, like I looked at it for four seconds before I realized what it was, you know what I Me mean? Me too. It was an interesting announcement, low key as hell. Very, that's what I was gonna say, very low key, and I feel like she's so extra. Um, but I just love them, I'm so happy for them. And when I think of like all the people Stassi's dated, like I feel like I know her because like I watch her show f every day since the beginning of time. Um, I'm just like, I feel like 
I feel complete. Like, I've been on this journey, mm -hmm. and I'm just so happy where she landed. Also, I feel like her, and also Naomi, they had this, like, thing where they just, like, don't think they're good enough for these men that they're dating. Yeah. And I'm glad. I hope now she can, like, relax, because yeah. she's engaged, and you don't have to, like, put on anymore. And it's like, everyone was moving into houses, but I think they wanted to get engaged before, and, like, now I wonder if they're going to move into a house. But also, she had a nicer apartment than the rest of the cast. Yeah, but, like, when all your friends have houses, like, you just want a house. Yeah. I do want a house, like every day more and more. I, know. I just need a fire pit. I know. I'm gonna like burn, make one in the trash can outside, <laughs> like burning trash. In an alley. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! No, they're really, really playing Halloween nights. Oh, her her ring is beautiful. Yeah, it's Huge. vintage from Bo's uh, side of the family. I think it's Bo's grandma. Shut up. So like that's so her to have like a vintage ring and like not, you know, she's very into that. Oh my god, I didn't realize that. That is really cool. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the most interesting factoid about the whole engagement, like it was beautiful, they went to Lisa Vanderpump's house. Kristen Doty was nowhere to be found. Stassi doesn't follow Kristen on Instagram anymore, and I've heard that a bunch of this season is Kristen having falling, having a falling out with Stassi and Katie. That makes me upset, because Kristen took a chance on, like, she was the one who brought Stassi back into the fold, and it's like I finally came around on Kristen when, for seasons, I was like, don't be friends with her, and now they're yeah. not friends with her when I want them to be friends with no, her. No, I am, like, so 100% a Kristen Doty supporter. She's literally never not been anything but so fucking nice to me. I love her so much. She's a good time. Um, so I'm saddened by this. And at first I thought maybe Lisa Vanderpump was just being an absolute bitch, not letting Kristen into her house because of their history. For sure. Uh, but now it looks like Stassi didn't invite her, not Lisa. Yeah, and even if Kristen couldn't be invited, she might have just posted, like, congrats to my friends. Right. Or maybe she had, say she had, like, something she had to go to, like, jury duty. She still would have posted congrats to my friends. There's something amiss. But I'm really curious about the timeline of this season because I feel like they would normally end with a wedding. But it's like they, Jax and Brittany got married, then Tom and Katie, and now an engagement. Where do you think the season ends? Um, in a few weeks. Or maybe with this engagement. Yeah, but they usually like, film... at this party at Lisa's. Yeah, but they usually film longer. Like, actually... But they started earlier because of the wedding, I think. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. So, it will be a great season. That means we'll get it earlier, hopefully. Yeah. So, so many Simchas for the Vanderpump Rules family. So many Simchas. They're all really figuring it out. Except, like, now with every season that's, like, a wedding, it's kind of annoying how they're, like, staggering. I don't want to watch a wedding every season. That's so true. I don't want to watch an engagement every season. Who's going to be my bridesmaids every season? Lala and Randall. I they're getting like married off camera. Th yeah, they have a date though. They do. Yeah, I love them. Love them. I love how much he loves the Vanderpump kids. Like he's like living his dream. Did yeah. you see the trailer for The Irishman? No. It's the new Martin Scorsese movie with like everyone and Randall is somehow involved in it, um, and it's gonna be like the next big thing. It's on Netflix. Ooh. It's gonna be on Netflix. I'm so happy. I hope it does well. I want Lala just to have a happy full life, full of lots of nice things. Full of lots of nice things. I agree. And there is a new castmate. Yes. Oh, my God. She looks great. Yeah, she looks super cute. She's friendly with um, Lala, I think. And Ariana. I saw that yeah, picture I saw that picture. Yeah, I speak on It was a great basically. picture. Yeah, it was premium as fuck. And I, I uh, stalked her on Instagram. She's really cute. Agreed. I'm excited. Me too. Okay, third story. Meghan Markle to launch a fashion line with designer pal Misha Nonu with a surprise twist. For every article of clothing bought, a piece will be donated to Meghan Markle's royal patronage, Smartworks. Meghan Markle is adding clothing designer to her resume. In the September of issue of British Vogue, which she guest edited, the Duchess of Sussex revealed she is partnering with her designer friend, Misha Nonu, to create a capsule collection of women's workwear. The line, which will be, which will be released in September, will benefit her patronage, Smartworks, a charity that helps women land jobs. That's so nice. That is nice. Meghan Markle is just doing it all. Do you see the Vogue thing? No. Like, British Vogue, it's... um. They interviewed like ten of the most powerful people in like in the UK, and they were all interviewed by Meghan Markle. Interesting. So, so the people who were it was so top secret. I saw like someone who was a part of it. Like they literally couldn't tell their husband that Meghan Markle interviewed them. They should be able to tell their husband. Yeah, it's like you don't trust your husband. Yeah. What you keep? What else are you keeping from him? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. I didn't know she was a journalist. And I've been thinking a lot about Meghan Markle because also she's at that like rich people conference, the Google thing. Yeah. Um, where it's like they they all got together to talk about climate change and they all took, took over private over 140 private jets landed and like polluted the earth. Um, like, That's they, so crazy. Couldn't they just carpool? Like, couldn't they carpool? Also, how would they not know that people would roast them for that? No. How do they not see the such hypocrisy? a lack of awareness? Yeah. But I, okay, so I was so, sorry. I saw pictures of her and I just like I really. That moment in particular, like, really put into perspective for me, like, 
how Meghan Markle is just like literally getting everything she's ever wanted. Literally, she's getting everything any human being has ever wanted. No, you but know? most people, you, she probably couldn't, actually she probably could, but most people don't even dream that big. I'm just like, I want a, a house with a fire pit, yeah. a mansion on a hill. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. like to be, you know, a world leader. I only want a mansion on a hill if the memories will keep me company. <laughs> yeah, whenever you're alone. Yeah. After all of your running. I'm finally coming. Home. Home. I think I'll do a ballad next. Yeah. You think? Oh, yeah. So what's next for you? I honestly want to do a cover, like release a highly produced cover. Of? Of something. Of Brave. Yeah. By Because I was going to do Shallow. Um, like when I was in the studio, I actually like was supposed to record it. But I feel like the time has passed. Like everyone's over Shallow. Agreed. Agreed. And everyone's doing covers of Shallow too. Are they? Yeah, like Danielle Bradbury and like whatever. It's weird. Damn, snitch with the shade. Yeah, totally. Margaret, what are your thoughts on Danielle Bradbury? I don't know. She doesn't do it for me. She doesn't do it for me either. We interviewed her. She was very... But I do kind of like her songs. I like her songs like too. Like Red Wine on a White Couch. Uh -huh. There's a great song. Ready? And you want to know how I discovered it? I was on a flight to LA listening to one of your guys' playlists and I fell asleep and with my AirPods in and then this song started playing and like I, my body literally woke up because I wanted to write down the song and it was Sway. Uh -oh. Oh. Makes you want to sway to the left and sway to, to the right. You want to hear the most annoying thing? Yeah. I fell asleep on the plane yesterday with my AirPods in and one of them fell out, never to be seen again. What? Yeah. I got down on like my knees after the flight ended, like with my flashlight, I couldn't find it. One time, I, most recently, I left the, the holder. Uh oh. So I had the pods, but Do you can you buy a holder. Oh, you can? It's like still expensive, sure but it's less. I'm pretty sure you can also buy one AirPod. I, I can get my AirPod. Your AirPod. That's where we got our AirPods. AirPods. <laughs> Snitch, like walking past the Apple store. <laughs> That's where we got our AirPods. She also has a Danielle Bradbury, another good song, Potential, and oh, Human yes. Diary. I literally only Human know Diary. And I love Layla. how we're like, mm, Danielle Bradbury doesn't do it for me. How many good songs does she no, have? No, no, no. Her herself doesn't do it for me, but yeah, her music she's does. she's very quiet and like un underwhelming. Yeah. I think that's fair. She's so small, too. She's like, so frail. It's so crazy. Totally. What were we talking about? Oh, dreaming big. Meghan Markle, living the dream. I know. It's like, I, I, don't, I don't find that I dream too big. All I want is to be number one on iTunes and have clear skin. And honestly, I'm on my way to doing both, thanks to BioClarity. BioClarity hey. is a clean and green skincare brand that has products that just work. What healthy eating does for your body, BioClarity does for your face. Their skincare line offers easy-to-use routines with good-for-you ingredients that will give you great skin. I found out about BioClarity from a very influential Instagrammer, Margot Washre, and your skin really was looking so good, and I asked you, and you said you were using BioClarity, and it really makes a lot of sense because if you go to a drugstore and you like look at face washes like the amount of chemicals it's really disgusting it's not good and that's not, that's not what you should be putting on your face and when you look at the bio clarity stuff it's like brown and green because it's like organic it's from the earth that's what it should look like yeah and my face i'm courtney did my makeup last night and she said my skin is so much better that's amazing yeah i'm really excited about it you can get healthier more radiant skin by going to bioclarity.com and right now for our listeners you will save 40 percent off on skincare routines plus an additional 15 percent off everything on their website it's an incredible deal but you need to enter our code toast at checkout so go to bioclarity.com and get 40% off skincare routines plus an additional 15% off everything on their website when you use our code TOAST at checkout. That's bioclarity.com, code TOAST. Love it. What did you guys think about the song The Archer? Oh, did we not talk about it? Well, you, I'm sure you did, but yes, I'm did. just curious about it. I spoke thoughts. about it with Margot because my first initial reaction, I was like getting really frustrated by the song because the beat never drops. And if you actually look at like the wave progression of the song, um, like where a normal beat would drop, she doesn't. The song progresses evenly, and then at the end, it drops a little. Um, and it was like frustrating me because if they had, like Kygo could turn that shit into a fucking banger. But I guess it was all about the message of like having anxiety, like, and, and like, like, it was, a, it was like a metaphor that the beat didn't drop. Yeah. Um, it really, I mean, it's a great song. It really reminds me of like kind of like an 80s, like Pat Benatar. You know, we were in the car yesterday and Ben thought Pat Benatar's name was Pat Benatard. <laughs> he kept saying that. I'm like, it's Benatar. He was like, no, it's not. That's funny. Because he was playing music on his phone. He's like, want to listen to some Pat Benatar? And I was like, what did you just say? That's hilarious. Um... It's a good song. What do you think about it? I really like it. it yeah. It's giving me like, you know, fearless vibes. It's giving me hope. It's giving me hope. And the, I really like the, the, the lyrics are great. She's not over producing it. Yep. And it gave me hope. Like she's still the girl that we all once knew. The lyrics are beautiful. And I the just really like beautiful. the song. And no, it's not a banger, but it's not meant to be. Yeah. Um, it's just a well done song. All of my heroes die alone. Oh my God. That Who that could one. ever lead me, me darling? darling. But who could stay? That is like the epitome. That lyric is like a, 
Like, that's, like, my life. Like, I am so overly confident while also being incredibly self-conscious. Like, who would ever leave me? But, like, but honestly, like, who, who would stay? stay? Yeah. So that is a lyric that I just really, like, resonated with personally. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Now for a little biz news. By the way, like, when we have our daytime talk show and we do, like, the business segment, and, you know, like, they'll put, like, a title card up and it'll be, like, a cute graphic of us being, like, Biz news. <laughs> I love planning for the future. Same. And since we are apparently um, influencers in the fake meat market, I would oh, be... Oh, you two are the faces of Impossible Burger. And yeah. Beyond Burger, too. Well, that's what this is about. Oh. I would be remiss if I didn't let you know that Beyond Meat's competitor, Impossible Foods, plans to launch in grocery stores in September after getting FDA approval. Grocery stores? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you. <laughs> What, no, counselor? but you made, Jackie, you made them sound so glamorous. I want to go shop at a grocery store. <laughs> a grocery store. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. Honestly, it's a great name for a chain. That is. Like grocery store. Right Where the down. celeb shop. Yes. At the grocery store. Yeah, and it's in Hollywood. <laughs> Someone fund our project. Beyond Meat's rival Impossible Foods plans to start selling its vegan burger in grocery stores in September. The FDA has approved Impossible Foods' use of soy legemoblabin as a color additive. <laughs> Earlier Wednesday, Impossible announced a manufacturing deal with a major meat supplier. You know what? This is I'm just so happy for the whole uh, I'm so, I'm really, Impossible family. I'm so happy for you guys. Like this just means you can like make when when there's a barbecue and you guys aren't eating, like you can just hey throw my Impossible burger on the grill. Yeah, and people like might think it's cool. And it's not like a veggie burger that like falls apart and you got like the peas and carrots falling through the grill. Yeah. However, I will say when it comes to at home, like that's where I have all the options and it's when I go out where I need impossible options, like Burger King, having an impossible burger is just so pertinent. If every and they've recently food... announced that they're going to take it nationwide. I guess the test markets did very well. Yeah, so every it would be great if every fast food, McDonald's, Wendy's, had impossible options. Therefore, I could like eat more than just French fries. Because when I'm home, like there are a lot of veggie burgers that I do and like. And you have kosher meat in your house. Yeah, or I can order from a kosher restaurant. Mm -hmm. or I, so. Ooh, I had a kosher steak before my party last night, and I really felt like it gave me the energy to survive like the night. It was a long night. That's great. A filet mignon. I really treated myself. Ooh, you deserve it. Number Fil four on the charts. Where's Margot going? I think she's walking out. She can't take it anymore. Oh. She's working on something. She, Special uh, PA project. By the way, she um, she just quit. I don't know. She just like walked out. I think they're doing a walkout. <laughs> oh my God, totally for Greenpeace. <laughs> okay. Fifth and final story in news that is pertinent to the situation, organizers finally canceled Troubled Woodstock 50 Festival. Oh, yeah. This was a long time coming, and I just think it's for the best. Organizers announced Wednesday that the Troubled Festival that hit a series of setbacks in the last four months won't take place next month. Oh, my God. The screen of the snitch cam empty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. <gasps> The three-day festival was originally scheduled for August 16th through 18th, but holdups included permanent denials and the loss of a financial partner and a production company. Last week, Jay-Z, Dead & Company, and Jogging Fogarty announced that they wouldn't perform at the event after organizers said it was moving to Maryland from New York. This thing was just riddled with problems, mm -hmm. and while it would have been cool to honor, you know, the legacy of Woodstock, I just think, um, like, it... These days, people are so sensitive to, like, things going wrong at festivals because we, as a generation, we've been scarred. We mm -hmm. have PTSD. So I just think this is really for the best. You know, I don't think people... I don't think there should be... There should be a rule. There shouldn't be... A, there shouldn't... It shouldn't be allowed to have, like, so many new festivals every year. Do you know what I mean? It's dangerous. No. Here's the rule. You shouldn't be allowed to sell tickets to something until the infrastructure is up and running. 1,000%. And there should be a company, a festival, like the FDA for festivals. festivals, where it's like, you cannot have a website until we come and check out your grounds. Yeah, or like see your... Well, Do an audit. Yeah, because they won't have the festival up and running, but we need to see your plans, your blueprints. How are people going to take a piss? Yeah, there needs to be a festival union. Yeah. No, a festival, like the FDA, the Festival yeah. Drug Administration. Yeah, the festival... The festival... I'm trying to think of a word for the D, but it's, yeah. not, it's not coming to the mind. The Festival D administration. Sure. Sitch, everything okay? Yeah, no, I was just working on something and it was going to be loud, so I okay. stepped out. You're back to work now? Yeah, yeah. So you didn't I quit. was working over... Because we were, we were actually, like, you know, interviewing people Yeah, we thought gone. there was a walkout. Yeah. But we missed you. <laughs> we're so glad you're back. You're so tan. Thank you. Um... What were we talking about? The festival. Oh, the, the FDA. Okay, yeah. We, I mean, I guess we could we could stop talking about that. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Anyways, I'm I'm feeling proud of the Woodstock organizers for putting their tail between their legs and not like ruining people's weekends with their crap. Yeah, my weekends are so precious to me these days. Like, all I want to do is be at home, be with Theo, be with Ben, and just not be bothered. Like, and if I'm 
if not only if I'm paying, but if I'm leaving my house to go to something new organized and I don't feel safe or there's not enough food or there's no bathrooms or in the case of fire festival, like there is no festival. Um, that's something I take really seriously. No, I agree. Which is funny. Cause you called me this morning, like trying to organize a, a lit weekend. A traverse. Yeah. When all you want to do is stay home. Yeah. I think we should stay home. I'm down. I was thinking that, but I, I would have gone with you. Cause you know what it was is I stayed home last weekend and I was so bored cause you weren't here. Margot like was in a mood where she like literally wouldn't talk to me on FaceTime. Um, Olivia, I, I saw Olivia and Zach three times because I saw. they were the only people I could hang up with. That's hilarious. What, what was everything okay? Counts. Yeah, she's like hanging out with my friends. Yeah, oh. she was being like a kid and like I was like her mom and she like literally wouldn't fucking answer my phone. And I was like laying in bed like so bored looking for some human contact, <laughs> and Margot wouldn't give it to me. Maybe we're not related. We should check our twenty three and me. You should. Because you sometimes act like a sister, and then sometimes you don't. No, I think it's key. You should check your 23 and Me. 23 and Me is really, really interesting. Because there's a whole world of genes just waiting to meet you in 125 plus personalized genetic reports on your health traits and more. The right personal health plan starts with the right data. Your health reports can give you insight about your DNA so you can build a health plan that's as unique as you. It's important to understand your genetic predisposition to certain health conditions like type 2 diabetes. It can be impacted by hundreds of genes. Other things can play a role too, like lifestyle and family history. It's just so crazy that we like live in a world now where it's like you can just like not even go to a doctor, like from your home, find out everything about your body and like how to take care of it and live forever. Yeah. You know? Hopefully. Hopefully, God willing. 23andMe reports do not diagnose diseases or describe overall likelihood of developing any disease. 23andMe tests selected genetic variants only. Visit 23andMe.com slash toast for important test information. Order your health and ancestry kit at 23, that's numbers 23andMe.com slash toast, and you can meet your genes in 125 plus personalized genetic reports. That's the number 23andMe.com slash toast. Love it. Um, it's just, it feels good to be back, you know, like back, it, it feels we're back, back, back in the New York room. It feels great to be back. Honestly, I really missed everyone, everyone here, everyone at home. I really miss the toast and the toasters. Hannah Lublet made a great call about Margo ignoring me this weekend. Claudia was like the little <laughs> sister being like, snitch, can I hang out with you? And Margo's like, no, I'm hanging with my friends. Yeah. Too cool for school. That counselor snitch. What uh, do you your friends do when you hang out? Ooh, great drink. question. Drink. Wow, I like when you said that word, I literally just gagged. <laughs> um, did you recap her honey? No, we didn't. No, but it's on. No, it was the part three. Oh, it was over. Yeah. No, then we didn't, um, but I did finish it. How did it end? I'm getting so confused between Beverly Hills and New York. I haven't watched Beverly Hills, so I'm. Um... It was excellent. Camille Grammer had a top five walk off. Really? Yeah, because Wait. she got naked. Oh my gosh, I have to see. But also, so I read Howard Stern's book and then I watched his movie, Private Parts. And Camille Grammer, Donna Tachi, is in it. And it's Donna Tachi Meyer. It, well, yes. It was filmed in the 90s, so it was before she was Grammer. So she was just a girl in a bikini. Oh my God. And I just didn't know if that was public knowledge or not. But she says, hi, I'm Camille. And this is Howard goes to Michigan or whatever. And her bathing suit in the snow. Oh my God, iconic. So I just feel like... If people didn't know that, they needed to know. Important to know. But watch Reunion. Let me know what you think. Um, it ended, like, on a nice note. Besides for Camille, she was being so crazy. Like, really. The New York Reunion ended on a good note, I thought. Um, the Luann of it all, like, still... Here's what bothers me about Luann. Like, the last episode was really about her, you know, and her divaness and her cabaret, whatever. And she saw herself doing this to Bethany, like, when she... Someone said that we did talk about this already. There's no way that we did, because I just watched it yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when she does this to Bethany, and she's like, Queen B, and then she like saw that that was wrong, and so when everyone's doing their regrets, she like regrets that, when it's like, you miss the point. No, she's so, like, she's so shallow, but she's trying to prove that she's not. No, it's like they ask her what she thinks about what she just saw, and she was like, and so could you, can you blame me for, what else it could it be if not jealousy? And then like everyone tells her, no, this is what you just saw, this is what you should feel. And by the end she just says that, but it's like her initial reaction to the clip shows how she actually feels about everything. Yeah, she's not good at, I mean, and this is the key to being a good housewife, is having a huge lack of self-awareness, which is why I can never be a housewife, I'm way too self-aware. Yeah, I agree. Um, just so many TV shows are like coming to an end. Yeah, but then we're coming to a start with, with OC and Dallas. Oh, Dallas. Dallas looks good. I saw a post in the toasters that a girl sat next to Deandra on a flight and they like she like talked about the show the whole time and Deandra was so nice. Oh my god. It's I like love to dream. hear that. I love Deandra. Me too. 
I'm excited. And I hope she doesn't have to make too many dangerous choices. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's the thing about being a Real Housewives of Dallas. It's, it's chock full of dangerous choices. Yeah, so. And Le Leanne's getting married. Oh, yeah. It'll That'll be, be interesting. It'll yeah. be great. And Carrie's no longer on the show. I know. Oh, I saw some shady stuff because people are saying that her and Mark um, left the show because there's uh, like a huge potential of them getting their own show and it's in the works or whatever. And Brandy replied to a tweet and was like, no. No, she was like, oh, I didn't know that. Congrats. Yeah, like, no, but she was like, I think she also said it was a YouTube series. I think that it is a YouTube series. I don't know that there's huge potential for a show to, no. for them to get their own I, I, like, I actually like them and I wouldn't watch their show. No, we have botched. Yeah. We're good. What do we, yeah. Like, we're good. I've just really been daydreaming about this night. For a long time. Wow. I just, I've been daydreaming about this day to get back on the show. I just really, like. We really miss I have you. a really new. Even we only did one show I have you. an invigorated love for the show. And that's what vacations are for. Yeah. No, but I, I never expected, and I never expected for me to be the person who would like go on vacation and like miss working. No, I'm telling that you. That was a real shock to the system. Because as entrepreneurs who like absolutely love our job, like it's not shocking. No, it, it was really crazy. I learned so much about myself. Um, I want to play the song for everyone because I've actually been waiting for this day my whole life. Um, just want to really reiterate to you guys, the song is available on Spotify, iTunes, and pretty much anywhere you can get music. iTunes preferred so I can climb that chart, but you know, do what you got to do. Um, I'm I, really... I think we should take a quick break and clear the set so we can dance. Oh, okay. What do you think? Yeah, like studio. Okay, I'm like so hungover, but... It will take... Okay, Jake, let's, put the, it's worth let's it. put the title card up and we'll be back to dance to my own song. And then we'll be gone, but just want to say love you, missed you, can't wait to be back. So August, happy to be back. we are here to Your stay. Your merch is um, being delivered. I, just, I, got I got my email my, today. I got my email today too, but I saw a bunch of people already got their packages, so that's really exciting. Tag us. I want to see that flag fly. Me too, me too. I want to see your On the back of the boat. flag fly. Back of the boat, back of the truck, flagpole, toasters, you know what's up. All right, we're going to put the title card up. We'll be back in a minute.
fuck up. <laughs> I'm counting down until we start. We're renegades. We come to play. Yeah, we play hard. Ooh. <laughs> Honey, tell me, gonna have a good time. A thousand hands up to the sky. We gonna get toasted tonight. What have you been feeling? Feeling it all day. I wanna let it go. I wanna lose control. Oh, I'm ready to roll. And I've been daydreaming about this night for a long time. Sing it if you know it. You. Let's go, girls. A toast to the wild ones. A toast to the hips, a toast to the lovers, a toast to you and I, a toast to the wild ones, a you and I, to you and I. Okay, the speakers. <laughs> okay. The speaker died, but our spirits did not. So stream toast, by toast, we have our summer pop anthem. <laughs> And it's fucking lit. Everyone have a great weekend. Send me videos of you singing toast in your toast merch. We love you so much. Have a great weekend. <laughs>